God knows that you're a sexy thing. It's taking everything in me. Not to kiss you over under, feel you inside, feel my thunder. How the hell could I not mm-hmm. want you? Girl, it don't have to be a thing. I'll wait for you, you'll wait for me, baby. Cause true love's consistent, we don't have to rush at all, baby, yeah. These yeah. are the times we all wish for. The, the moment we less means so much, much more. more. We, we don't have to do a thing at all. We take our time and talk. And this is the way things need to be. No pressure from you and no pressure from me. Just let the mood set the moment off. We can make love or not at all. Be thinking about you all the time. Morning, noon, and supper time, baby. Tear you up in little pieces. Swallow you like Reese's Pieces. Come on, girl, you know I need you. It ain't supposed to be a thing. I'll wait for you, you wait for me. True love's consistent. We don't have to rush at all. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Short Desk Podcast. This is episode 31. Thank you guys for joining us. We've got Miss Mahogany here. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Big time. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Happy to be here this Sunday morning once again yes. with all you beautiful people. All you people. Beautiful people. All the beautiful people here. Uh, episode 30 was a great rant. I'm not going to open up the episode with another rant. Much appreciated, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 30 that minute was, rant. Uh, that was heavy. Yeah, it was. I think that was that your most big. epic rant to date. You think so? I think so. It beat coming to America? No. no. You don't think so? No. Coming to America. It was comedic <laughs> and epic at the same time. It was very much intense. Well, you meant that. But it was still funny, so it had a little dimension to it. Well, there was nothing funny about uh, this this last that, that last rap, but that's neither here nor there. It's a new week. I guess you got to rate them right on the. the <laughs> I, we we got to do a, yeah, we got to <laughs> categorize them because remember, I went on a second rant about coming to America, but that one was more controlled. Remember, I went on like a I went on like a fifteen minute diatribe about coming to America, but it was like more control. It was a little more mellow. Uh, yeah. I guess. <laughs> we'll, we'll start ranking them. I when, suppose. <laughs> when we get to a certain episode, that'll be one of the top ten lists. Well, you know what? <laughs> in, in, in hindsight, your rant. You, you ethered, you ethered uh, <laughs> coming to America mm-hmm. in the first rant. I will say that. It was funny, mm-hmm. uh, but it was uh, serious at the same time. Um. This last rant, it was a little bit more, uh, it was well thought out, I will say that. Mm. It was well thought out, and um, you observed for quite some time. I slept on that. Yeah. So, quite, it was very thoughtful, I'll say that. Mm. Not saying that your other rant wasn't thoughtful, mm. but this one. Understood. Kudos, I'll say kudos. I appreciate it. Yeah. I want to make you guys laugh real quick. I'm going to show you guys a picture. So this is currently outside of our office here. <laughs> so Kobe, our bulldog, is afraid of this fan. No. So that's so <laughs> my wife put that fan there to keep him from bull- bulldozing his way into the room by uh, opening up the door 
with his nose and he is afraid, deathly afraid of that fan. So he won't be coming in here anytime soon. Oh, now, is it the be, fan yeah. itself or the noise from the fan? It's the fan, period. Uh, well, no, because it doesn't make any noise. So just the fan. It's the fan. Wow. Mm-hmm. And it's weird because I have a fan on my side of the bed upstairs. It doesn't look like that one, but he's not afraid of that. But that fan? Is it structured differently? Uh, not really. Is it a different color? No, I think it's the same color. Black? Mm-hmm. It's weird. But he ain't coming in here anytime soon. He don't like the energy from the fan. No. Something. Does, the, does that particular fan have to be in any location in the house for him not to be afraid of it? Uh, no. Do you think it freaks him out because it's in front of a portal, i.e. a door, a double door? You know what? I think it is. He's. Uh, we keep that. That fan's in the garage. Mm-hmm. Everything that we bring from in the garage, he's like freaked out about. The mop, the broom. It's a ghost in the garage. Uh, uh, we're not going to go that far. Hey, yeah, let's not do that. Now you just don't want me to live here no more. I mean, I will tell you, I will happily have this beautiful home. <laughs> if it's a ghost in here, you can have it. I will. And we will I'll be gone. harmoniously together. <laughs> this would be my beach studio. Well, right? ain't nobody live here before us. So. I know. It's fine. But it's fine. You don't know what ground this is on. It's fine, because you never know. <sighs> We're not going to get into that. Okay. How was your week? Everything is perfectly normal. Mm. <laughs> it's just been a busy week. Lots of um, orders coming through. You know, you didn't do it last episode. I need you to promote your stuff. Hey, oh. y'all. Of course, it's Mahogany from M. Rochelle Jewels. If you would like to have any of my products, as John Jiggles his bracelet. <laughs> Um, you can uh, check those out at uh, www.mrochelle.com. Uh, Keith also is. <laughs> My other two are in the car because I, <laughs> I constantly wear those two. I wear the, the white, the this oh, one this on special regular. occasion. Oh, those are regular? Okay. Those are regular, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, uh, my Instagram handle is underscore M Rochelle Jewels underscore. My Facebook page is M Rochelle Jewels. And that's M R O C H E L L E Jewels. Wonderful. Great product. Uh, the the waist beat journey, how's that been? Um, Woo! Took a breath there. You heard that, John? Yeah. Uh, last 100%. Week, I had seven individuals who know an individual that by waist speeds from me buy between seven and 10 strands a piece. So, wow. Yeah. And then I have now the lock jewels have bumped up crazy. So there are officially five, which is my threshold, um, five stylists that purchase bulk orders on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. So I am always making something. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's thank you, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is very good. Yeah, I'm definitely um, humbled by it all and appreciative of those who trust me with their energy as well as creating beautiful things for them. Well, you know, you put out a great product. You are a great person. So thank you. it is well deserved and earned. Oh. John, how's your week? I'm um, happy to be on this side of the dirt. Period. Um, <laughs> yeah. Over time, once again. Uh, it's a busy it, time. It's a busy time, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I got a doctor's appointment <laughs> coming up. Okay. So, may or may not give details uh, in reference to that, but we'll see. Well, Just a regular checkup. I pray it's all, it's all good. Just a regular checkup. It'll be all good. Yep. I got a visit with the vaccine doctor to get that shot. So that second dose. Second dose. Yeah. How you feeling about that? Uh, you know, I told you how I feel about vaccinations. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm against it, but you know, uh, we're at a point where you just have to do something, I guess. And my wife did it. Parents did it. I said, well, my wife's doing it. I need to do it, you know, and uh, getting it done. <clears throat> Still going to keep my mask on. Period. It doesn't yeah. matter, you know, if I was vaccinated or not. Still not going to large gatherings or places that there's too many people there for me. 
Uh, that's just the way that I have done things for the past year. And I've, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So that's just where I am with that. Okay. But I got the second shot, by the way. So. And how was that for you? As uneventful as the first, the only difference, um, I know the first time I, um, I, I took a long nap afterwards. I was sleepy too after that first shot. Yeah. So uh, what I did after I got the shot, of course, <clears throat> I stayed there for 15 minutes because um, mm-hmm. my wife was with me too. She got the second shot. Uh, took everybody to first watch, got a big breakfast in. Mm-hmm. And um, I stayed conscious for most of the day. The only uh, difference this time was my body was running a little hot. Okay. Body was running a little hot and my heart rate was up but this was towards the latter part of the the day or in the evening i noticed that my heart rate even when i was resting it was a bit elevated hmm. so do you think you <clears throat> do you think you subconsciously was kind of like i hope i'm okay or and that may have increased your heart rate or were you just perfectly normal perfectly fine no it was um i was a little concerned Okay. Uh, Because usually, and this is towards the tail end of the evening, so this is right before I'm getting ready to go to bed. So you was just normal, relaxing. I was normal, yeah, watching television. Okay. Not doing anything strenuous whatsoever. Okay. I was uh, completely sedentary at that time. Okay. And um, just noticed my heart rate was up like in the 90s, Mm -hmm. laying on the couch when it's usually in the low 50s, I mean, high 50s, low 60s. Yeah. At that time. So I thought that was weird. And then my um, skin was just hot to the touch. Mm. But I said, you know, I want to take a day off from work just to monitor this. Mm-hmm. Um, so luckily it went away as soon as I wake, woke up and everything was normal. I wasn't panicking or anything like that. But once again, it was just a, I was overly cautious. Okay. So, but other than that, I'm fine. Well, we will see this afternoon. Uh, Didn't grow an extra appendage or anything like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I fought off that sleep when I told you I took that first one. I was asleep. I'm surprised you did. I couldn't. I just fought it off, man. I just said, no, nah, I ain't going to sleep. I don't know, you know, again, because you know how I am with taking that stuff. And so, and, and shouts out to my wife, man. She's a soldier because you got big old me sitting in that chair at Publix. And I'm looking at her telling her, you got to hold my hand. <laughs> she held my hand <laughs> and before you know it it was over with I didn't feel a thing um, you, know you got a jam on your hands yeah so shout out to my wife for dealing with this big old baby it's okay you have a big old baby my, my, yeah. my wife yeah that's that's awesome man that is, um, that is dope. Yeah. shout out to uh, your wife yeah my wife had to literally set up all my appointments yes uh, yeah. to get me to go to the doctor yeah because she asked me what the last time you've been to the doctor Dennis was like a few years. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say a few. It was more than a few, like four or five years. Mm-hmm. She's like, no, you, I'm setting this up. Give me yeah, insurance fine. information, all this stuff. I'm setting this shit up right now. Yeah. And doctor, when last time you've been to the doctor, because I've been to doctor earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, she said, well, have you been back for a fault? Like, no, I haven't scared a fault. <laughs> Why don't men like the doctor? Mm. Uh, if I sneeze hard, I'm using this good insurance. I don't like hearing bad news. I think that's it. But I don't want to I don't want anybody to tell me what I can and cannot do. Yeah. <sighs> and wanted, our minds were invincible. Well not Well not now. Right. But we just don't want to hear. Like you said, we don't want to hear what you can't what we can't do. I don't want to hear bad news. Proactive, not reactive. <laughs> Let's do that, okay? You made it duly. That's a that's a solid point. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Appreciate y'all. Even if you say it, though. Are we going to get the season two of film? <sighs> what are we sipping? I'm s- <laughs> I got the munch. You got the sip. I don't know. I'm, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to get there. We are going to Hey, man, what are we sipping on? We are going to get there. But I, Well, again, I do want to say that I think that it's good. I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm not big on vaccinations. I'm not big on any of those things. I'll never sit here and tell people, go get vaccinated, go get vaccinated. Right. No, what I will tell you is if you are vaccinated, 
still stay safe. If you're not vaccinated, vaccinated, be mindful of others because you could be carrying something and you could be, you know, asymptomatic and not know that you're giving it off to someone else. And then boom, we have a friend, you know, lifelong friend that's been battling with this and, you know, I'm praying for a different outcome for her by the time this episode is dropped and she's in ICU. I mean, she's battling for her life, sedated, intubated, all those things. 38 years old, just had a baby when baby ain't even one year old, got two other kids, three kids. Um, you know, one that's a 12 years old, the other one's, you know, an adult, but battling it. So since the 28th of July. Yeah. So it's real. Yeah. It's real. It's not fake. It's not some made up political thing. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm just amazed at people that say, oh, this is a political thing. Really? OK, yeah. well, don't get evangelical, too. I, right. We've had two different political parties in the office since this pandemic has hit. And it's the same thing as it was last year when we had a right wing in as we now have a left wing. in. nothing has changed with this. And it seems like every other country can look at this as not a political thing except for the United States of America. And I don't know what well, I do know why, but it's just amazing to me. This is not a political thing. And the people are always saying, don't infringe on my freedom or my right. OK, <clears throat> so those are the same people that will hop into their cars and put on their seatbelt. Isn't that infringing on your freedom? Your freedom to move around and put your seatbelt on. You don't have that. You don't have no problem with that being the law <laughs> to help protect lives. But something else that they say that may help protect life, and it doesn't. And, and if you want to look at it the same way, wearing a seatbelt doesn't always protect a life. Same thing with a mask; it's not going to always protect you from the COVID, but it can help. It drastically reduces your risk. Right. So, again, I'm not a a anti-vaxxer. I'm not a pro-vaxxer. Again, I'm doing this because, you know, I felt like at the time, okay, this, this would be a good thing to do. So I'm not going to enforce my beliefs on anyone because I'm, I'm still out there. I'm getting the vaccination and I'm still like, I don't know if I should be doing this. Right. But we know it's real. And I've known of people personally dealing with it. And I have someone personally that I've known for over half my life that is fighting for their life from it. No other, you know, um, medical history background that is playing a part of this. No, they caught the Delta variant of it and it's fighting for their life. So for those that this is political, it isn't that bad. Maybe your symptoms weren't that bad. Maybe they weren't, you know, my, my sister had it and she, her, thank God her symptoms weren't bad. They weren't bad. You know, uh, she, she had a little congestion, eyes hurt, you know, but there's some side effects that she's dealing with from it. From a mental standpoint that I saw that would happen to people. So it's, it's, it's hitting, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, oh, well, if you're not in a enclosed place, you're good. She caught it on the outside. So you're not in the clear from whatever this airborne thing is. We're not in the clear from it. So, yeah, I know your freedom is not to wear a mask. You also want the freedom to just gun down people whenever you want to, too. I understand that. But you can't, <laughs> you know, if for the for the 15, 20 minutes that you're outside of your house, wear your mask. Wear it. You know what I'm saying? I don't like wearing that thing either. I'm I'm a big man. I can't, you know, I'm not going to say, listen, I know I'm not in that much of bad shape because I'm not gasping for breath when I have that mask on, but I get hot as hell without the mask. That's my problem. I get hot. <laughs> and that mist builds under your nose and on top yeah. of your lip and into your eyes and 
I just get mad that my glasses fog up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The glasses yeah. just come off. I, and I have no <laughs> fog, right? It mm-hmm. ain't working. I'm just <laughs> like this. I'm like this anyways because I got to go get some new glasses because Kobe broke my glasses. But <gasps> yeah, he broke them. Yeah, he got to them. I don't know how I left them on the ground. But again, it really doesn't hurt to you get in your car, you put on your seatbelt. You do it because, well, it's the law and then also safety precautions. But that 15 minutes that you are walking to the restaurant or in the store, you don't want to do that because that's infringing on your rights. But wearing a seatbelt is same, you know, same expectancy of, you know, saving a life is pretty much right there with the mask and the seatbelt. But one, you're okay with doing the other. And, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that the people that don't care, it doesn't, it doesn't bother them until it hits home. When someone they know catches it or they catch it, then all of a sudden that mindset kind of changes a little bit. But this whole, it's a political thing, is BS, and it just needs to stop. We are the only country that makes everything political, everything. And it's not necessary. It's not. Everybody got it together except for the United States. True. The Delta variant came out. And but these other countries, they took the appropriate measures to, hey, let's stop the spread. Now, the United States, we're the land of the free, except for black people. And we're not going to enforce these things on people that they can't do what they want to do. You got the left wing saying that the right wing don't believe it. you got the right wing saying the left wing are extreme. Is everybody extreme? Mm-hmm. Stop making this political. It's simple science. Everybody's a doctor now. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> oh, you can't do. Don't worry. Where did you get your medical degree from? Where did you study this? I, I'm sorry. I, uh, have you been, these people that are saying that this ain't real or whatever? Have you been to the local hospital? Because guess what? They they've had a thing now in Orlando where we got to cut back on the water. Because of the oxygen levels for the people that are using it in the hospitals, that's how overrun this metropolitan city, one of the biggest cities in the United States. I think we're like number 19 out of all the cities in the United States. We're number 19 on the list and growing. And we got to cut back on water usage at our homes. But it ain't real. I tell you what, go to any medical facility. That's a WWE term. They don't like to see hospital. <laughs> go to any medical facility and go talk with the doctors and nurses that are working there around the clock and ask them, is this real? Ask them, is this a problem? When they haven't seen their families for two or three weeks. Because they've been working, then they got a quarantine. They've been working, they got a quarantine because they don't want to bring back to their families. Ask them. Ask them that has to stay there late because of everything that's going on. Man, this turned into another rant, didn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I just thought that. (laughs) Ask them that. Ask them. You got a problem with running into Publix for the 10, 20 minutes that you're in there wearing a mask. Not giving a damn about anybody else that may have some underlying condition that is wearing their mask. You don't care. It's about you. That's the problem with the world today. No one cares about anybody else. They just want to make it about them. I don't like wearing this thing like the next person. But you know what? If I'm asymptomatic and I'm a carrier of it. I want to make sure I prevent anyone else, that little old lady, that little old man or that 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 young girl or or young lady that may have just got finished battling breast cancer or or that kid dealing with leukemia or this older elderly person that that wants to live to be to their 90s. I want to prevent myself from passing that on to them. So I'm going to do the right thing. Stop being effing selfish. And I and I was so close to using the F word there. Stop being so selfish. That's the problem with the world. 
Nobody's infringing on your rights. You can still breathe. Nobody's taking away your right to breathe, you asshole. Nobody's taking away your right to eat. The restaurants haven't closed. They say you could take your mask off when you sit down. That 10, 15 minutes you got to wait to get in to sit down and eat. You can bear that. If you can't go sit in the car until they text you your, 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 your number or whatever it is. Or just order takeout and have it delivered to your car. Order takeout. Or you can't deal with going to the store wearing your mask. Order. They got they got all these apps now. They go in there and go and shop for you. Mm-hmm. Do that. Do that. Stop thinking about yourself. Think about others. That's what that's what everyone was taught. Think about others. Think about other people that got to come behind you or come, you know, when you when you're leaving out of a parking space. Think about the other person that want to get that part. Think about all these things. It's not about just you. And then you want to get there and 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 um when it when you when you get hit with it or your family member gets hit with it, you want all the empathy. But you could care less beforehand. It only takes somebody close to you for you to go, oh, this is real. This isn't a political thing. And some people are just going down with the Titanic. I'm seeing so many people that's saying that it ain't real while they're dying from it. Stop it. I want to go back to the movies without a mask. I haven't been. I want to get back my Disney annual passes. But guess what? I can't do that shit if y'all still around here, you know, walking around. Hey, I'm good. Ain't no COVID. Ain't no COVID. Any of y'all ain't no COVID people give it to my parents. Guess what? I'm going to have to come see you. Because it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. So just do the right thing. That's you're not like gonna get says. you're not gonna get vaccinated. That's fine. I'm good with that. Keep your mask on. If you know you're not gonna do it, keep your mask on. That's what we did last year. Wasn't no vaccination last year. So we kept our mask on. <laughs> That's how we made it. Correct. Mm-hmm. We kept it on. You know what I'm saying? Keep it on until you can pull it off. <sighs> I did not want to do two episodes in a row where I did a rant and it happened. Yeah. Is that a short <laughs> test podcast first? I think so. Because <laughs> the last uh, two rants, they were spaced out. They were. I don't know. It's just it's touching me because of what our friend is going through. Right. Um, because she, again, I, even before this happened, even before my sister got it, before other people I knew got it, I didn't go, well, it's not real until I know somebody else. No, I knew it was real. (laughs) You know, I knew it was real. I knew it was out there. You know what I'm saying? I knew it. And and I saw it and I said, well, you know what, man, I'm going to take precaution and I'm not going to wait until it hits close to home. To know this friend is battling for her life behind this disease. It is wearing on me a bit. It's wearing on me. So, uh, and I'm the type of person now where I am in life. I used to want to be. I, I used to be the life of the party. Now. <laughs> I can stay. It, it, I can make the party in my house by myself. I don't have to go nowhere. Last year proved that to me, a hundred percent. I ain't have to go no. I didn't go nowhere for like the first seven months of the year. I didn't go anywhere. Like nowhere. When I finally start going to the store, man, I, <laughs> yeah. So, Instacart was my friend for quite some time. <laughs> Instacart, DoorDash. Yeah. All that stuff. The stuff I never thought I would use. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's on my phone. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it is a... What a time to be alive. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I'm done. Uh, that won't 
happen next episode. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mahogany's going to give us what we're uh, munching on. I'm going to tell you right now what we're sipping on. Last week we had the Welch's sparkling white grape. What did y'all think of that? It was Matter of fact, delicious. it was delicious. I think. Do you think it had something to do with how bad the munches that we had was? No, what or it was good juice anyway. Oh, okay, you know, so it was. It was nice. It was refreshing. Okay. Um, this week we're gonna try the red grape. You ever had the red grape? Mm-hmm. I have not. Okay. That was um. My first time having the white, and this would be my first. No, you know what? Don't. Yeah, it is. You know what's funny? At our wedding, that's what we toast with. And I don't even. I think I just took a sip. We had uh, white and red, uh, white and red grape. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, sparkling white and red grape juice, and I. Remember taking a sip from the toast? And that was it. <laughs> that was it. So, yeah, that's what we're going to sip on today. You know what's funny about my wedding? We got all that food. And me and my wife didn't eat one thing. What? We I couldn't eat. Why? That's how it normally goes for weddings, though. Yeah. Especially for the people getting married. Y'all didn't eat? I don't remember... Eating any of the food that we had catered. Really? At the wedding. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I might have taken a bite. I took one bite. But it was, mo- you were mostly mingling and mingling and <laughs> mingling. That's what I found myself doing during my wedding. Yeah. Mingle, mingle, mingle. No nibble, nibble, nibble. Mingle. Yeah. I didn't eat till. Mahogany, you're looking in disbelief. Now, take me to the courthouse, then I'm eating. <laughs> you might as well. I'm not I'm eating. You're not gonna enjoy. You're not gonna enjoy any of the things that every that the guests are gonna enjoy. You know, I don't. I don't know. I don't like enough people <laughs> to have a big wedding or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that um, it's a celebration, all of the things, but I would just personally prefer a super exotic honeymoon somewhere. Mm-hmm. I would rather spend my money there. Than, Might as well. Um, yeah. Because you got to live afterwards. Exactly. I, I I know a few associates that are in debt from a wedding and no longer married. Because that's for everybody else, impressing everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I have attended weddings. Absolutely beautiful. I am happy for anybody that has them if that's what they want. It's mm-hmm. just not for me. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, we got, we did the... We did the thing in the church and um and um after we did the thing in the church, like just with parents and stuff, we then said, Okay, we want to do a ceremony for everybody. And it was a fun experience. We had fun. Uh we had fun. I, I don't I don't look back and go, uh, I wanna do it again. We actually at that time we got such a great deal. Mm-hmm. With the wedding package, and this is right when the crystal ballroom oh, and had started. But yeah, we 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 were at the original. Now they got like three or four different locations, but we were at the original one. Yeah, um, is that Castleberry? Yeah, yeah, Castleberry. The if we did that same wedding today, I'm sure it'd be an extra twenty thousand. <laughs> they still have great packages, from what I I've yeah. seen. Um, assisting a friend in planning hers. Oh, okay, oh, but. Salute everyone. Yes, sure. Yes. So yeah, um, they don't disappoint. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We still don't know what we munching on though. So, so let's go with it. <laughs> what what we munching on? All right. So we still have Taiwanese snacks. Oh man. Um, taro classic wafers. Ooh. They just look like a vanilla wafer. Taro. Whenever I hear taro, like I tarts? think of the treats that they make for my dog because oh. they can't have chocolate. Oh. And it's made with taro, I believe. I mean, it's either taro or caro, but I, I believe it's one of the two. We got something that smells like a puppy treat, but ah, uh, that's probably it. Go All ahead. right, so we got umbrella cookies that look like little wafer bowls, maybe. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 a good depiction of what that looks um, like. Soft yuzu citrus cake. I am extremely um, I'm frightened nervous of that one. About that one. I am scared to taste one? that one. Mm-mm. That's that little right there. That the little square mm-hmm. brick thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then we um, have soy crackers. Mm-hmm. And then we have wafer roll cookie. It's called crepe dentel. Mm-hmm. Wafer roll cookies in cherry blossom flavor. Crepe. Crepe. Dentel. Crepe. Crepe. The E. The thing. Okay, got it. Okay. (laughs) So we have that in cherry blossom. Cherry blossom? Flavor. It's artificially flavored. To taste like a cherry blossom? I don't know. Let's see. Go ahead. I don't know about a cherry blossom. Pass me that wafer. I can't reach way over yonder. This one or that one? Just pass me three of them. Okay, so the, uh, break off a piece of that one. There. Okay. Um, the long short. Yep. That one. That one. Okay. Let's try this one. Now, which one is All this right. one? This I'm one? just going to go that jump. Is the um the umbrella cookie. You going to go ahead and get that out of the yeah, way, Yeah, I'm John? just going to get this um, stuff out of the way. Thanks. <laughs> I'll do it with you, wait. I appreciate that. All right. The wafer isn't that bad. Mm. Y'all gonna throw up? What's going on? Mm -mm. It's not horrible. But they could have left that. We could have left that one in the box, though. It tastes real diabetic, like really, like no sugar, like no, mm-hmm. you know, like safe. Mm-hmm. It still smells horrible though. Is this the the taro? That's the that's uh, the one that no, smells like doggy treats. Citrus cake. Mm. Okay, so I like that one right here. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Which one's that one? Okay, this is the crepe, crepe, crepe. Mm-hmm. Okay, then tell the wafer roll cookie. It was. I like that wafer. The wafer is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. What's that chip there? Look like a Frito chip. Okay, that is the soy crackers. Oh, okay, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. This tastes like it should be stuck in a bowl of ice cream. Like yeah yeah you're right the yeah. crepe thing the strawberry crepe mm-hmm. yeah all right well since we're eating on cookies I'm gonna go ahead and do the top cookies of all time since we're here and we might as well make it a thing top ten list mm-hmm. let's get to the top ten list uh so again voted on by the viewers John you making a bad face which one did you not like what was that this one right here yeah I didn't like that one either. I don't know what cookie that is. That's the little windmill cookie. That's a cookie? Yeah, it says umbrella cookie. Uh, you guys voted on top 10 lists again. We we post them every uh, every other week yeah. mm-hmm. on all our social media platforms. You guys can vote on them. If you yeah. are not on uh, social media, you can email at the short desk podcast at Gmail to find out what we are doing for the poll. And we will give it to you. And then you can give your vote. That's the way to enter. Uh, so, top 10 cookie list. You guys ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, I'm going to start off this time. Do it. <laughs> I got honorable mention, and I've got a few of them. So be quiet, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> I can only hear, hear her over your shoulder. She was like, huh. <sighs> I only got one honorable mention. <laughs> she makes sure to leave that S off. So, Lorna Doom, mm. the old school Chips Ahoy, not the new one, the old school Chips Ahoy, Nutter Butter, the Keebler Fudge Stripes, the one with the circle and you put your finger in, um, the Little Dutch made buttering cookies. You know, the cookies you put around when you were a little kid. Put it on your finger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is my honorable mention. And I'm going to 
just go off with number 10. Number 10, this is an old school cookie from back in the day that I used to eat when I was a kid. It was called Giggles. It was a sandwich cookie and they made it up like a face, like you have a smiling face and it had a mixture of fudge and vanilla cream in it. So it was a, it was a vanilla cookie. They also had them in chocolate too, like Oreo. And it was like, it was by Nabisco, I believe. And it was like a, 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 a they put a smiley face on the cookie and it was the cream mm. in there. I love that cookie just because it was like, you know, the way it, it looked. Um, so it was a good cookie to me. Number 10 is giggles. What you got for number, what's your honorable mentions, Mahogany and your number 10. I don't have any honorable mentions. Woo, let's go. My, <laughs> <laughs> not one. I let you have them all. Um, Ooh. I have ginger snaps, but I don't even know the brand, but they got to come from family dollar. <laughs> I know I, which brand I, you're talking about. I don't I don't even know the name of the brand, yeah. but they the got bag? they have yes, they have mm-hmm. got to come from Family Dollar. Okay. Okay. Get yourselves. It's a thick brown bag, right? Yes. It's a very durable bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, you gotta cut it open with um scissors. You de- definitely because you're not gonna yeah, yeah no. It ain't happening. <laughs> Woo. Okay. What you got, Uh I got only have one honorable mention. Uh ginger snaps mm. is my honorable mention. Um Probably the same bag that Mahogany's talking about <laughs> <laughs> at the Family Dollar, mm-hmm. or it could be a Dollar Gym. I dollar. just got put on to those recently too. And those are okay. yeah, uh, that's a great afternoon snack. Okay, um, number ten is uh, peanut butter patties, the Girl Scout cookies. Oh my God, I forgot about Girl Scout cookies. That is my Man, favorite. The I patties. Put the, I put the patties in the refrigerator. Oh my God. <clears throat> let so them cr- little cream get cold yeah take I'm, it out <laughs> I'm calling the audible <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and finish John oh god so when you take them out of the refrigerator it seems like um, even though it's cold it melts in your mouth mm-hmm. the chocolate mm-hmm. and the peanut butter and then um, I don't know if that cookie is like a, a, a shortbread type cookie or something like that mm-hmm. within that patty but it's just it's just absolutely divine so that's my number 10, the uh, Girl Scout cookie peanut butter patties. <laughs> I'm making, a, I'm calling the audible. <laughs> Giggles is off the list. <laughs> oh, Giggles is off the list. My number 10 is actually these cookies from back in the day called Almost Home Chocolate Chip and Fudge Cookies. Mm-hmm. They were in like a brown box. This is, I'm going old school because I don't eat cookies like that unless they're homemade now. Mm-hmm. And they were so good. I used to get them in my lunchbox when I was a little kid. I loved them. Loved them. You could put them in a microwave and in the middle had a little foot. Oh, my God. It was so good. (laughs) Mm. That's my number 10. My number nine is the Girl Scout peanut butter fudge. What is it called? Patties. Patties. The peanut butter patties. Mm. So let me tell you a quick funny story, right? When Girl Scout cookies came out and my wife and I first started dating. Many, many years ago, she used to tell me, I don't like those cookies. I'm like, oh, okay. More for me. <laughs> Didn't care about then it. a day later, I noticed that the quantity of those cookies start disappearing. And I said, well, wait a minute. Hmm. I only had two. There's like four, four or five a row. Right? Yeah, yeah. On the row thing. I'm like, I only had like two. Why is this whole row gone? So I say, hmm, maybe I ate more than what I knew. Come back. I take a whole row. Come back. That next row is gone. I said, wait a minute now. Because in your mind, you know she don't like these yeah. things. Yeah. Okay. So I went to her and said, hey, um, is something going on with my cookies? She was like, what you mean? I said, uh, the cookies are gone oh i said what oh me oh i just had a few a few (laughs) you eat more than me (laughs) so now whenever we order those girl scout cookies i order about two or three because she will yeah i thought i like them but she be she'd be like oh i like the lemon cookies i like yeah no so she goes rogue from time to time yes she she'll get a little carried away a little is not I'm good. sorry. Mm-hmm. We call it a cookie bandit here because 
I'll buy Isaac those cookies from Publix. He likes those Publix cookies that's in the little the baked ones or uh, from the bakery. Yeah, the bakery, the ones that's out there. And he'll be like, "Hey, did you have some of my cookies?" I'm like, "No, you know I don't eat them cookies." I've witnessed one of those discussions. With <laughs> oh, you have. Yeah. <laughs> and you two are, become sleuths, as and well, yeah. you can already determine she's the cookie monster, cookie bandit. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I only had room. one or two. Yeah, one or two to the Yeah, you two were count, go back and forth. <laughs> How many did you have? I had one or two. And you said I had one or two. So, right. Process of elimination. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the wife. Yes. It's mom. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. The cookie bandit. So, yes. That's what she is. So, that was my number nine. I had to make it audible. Uh, what you got for number, we're on number nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Um. <laughs> I got the old school butter cookies, okay. the little one mm-hmm. shaped like little flowers. Yeah, I don't know. Put on your pinky. Pinky. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I had for my uh, yeah. Yeah, I got those for my number. Little nine. Dutch man. I eat them now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. When Dixie got them, yes, mm. got the strawberry ones. Too. I seen that. I seen when that Dixie one. is underrated with their, uh, sh- they're underrated with everything with with their cookie game. Uh, well, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, uh, my number nine was golden Oreos. Mm. I do like Oreos. I prefer those over the regular Oreos for Really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I prefer those. They're a guilty pleasure. Yeah. It's uh, it's so the, difficult. The ones. It's so difficult to stay within the um the serving amount. Because mm-hmm. I think it's two or three. <laughs> yeah. And I end up getting like at least five, six. You can get those. the thins. Get the thins, you can eat more. Yeah, I cheat with thins. Go to Oreos. It's though. not enough though. <laughs> and then at one point I was buying the one with the I double tried. with the double filling. Oh wow! My wife said uh, I brought them home um, one day. She said, "You used to get the regular ones. Why'd you get the one with the double filling?" Like I love the filling because I'll take the <laughs> I'll, you know you, you break them apart and then you take the the other one with the filling on it and mm-hmm. you make it uh, quadruple. Oh, of wow! Well, I don't, that's too much sugar. Mm. So bring home the regular ones. So I just brought home the regular ones. I haven't had them in a while, but. Damn, John. That was very creative. Yeah. Wow. Turn into a nice little sandwich. And <laughs> it'll be so thick, it'll spurt out on one side. You could tell I can tell that really... makes you happy, too. Yeah. yeah. Look at the glee in his eyes. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, going to buy wow. some from here, so when you come Even here, though you I'm a some. 38-year-old man, you, you still have that, that kid that resides inside of you. And the double stuff. It's so. just those guilty ple- pleasures that you just... You always got to have at some point. So you're right. Yeah. All right. Number eight for me is insomnia cookies. So insomnia is a place, um, a cookie place. They have one out there by UCF. They have one downtown. I don't know if they have another place. So what they are is they have, they actually bake the cookies. And then in the front, they have many ovens that keep them hot. So when you come in and you order the cookies you want, they open up that oven, scoop them, boom. <laughs> Mahogany, yes. Insomnia cookies, they are open real late. They also deliver. If it's the name by. Insomnia. Yes. They are. You said UCF, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. UCF and downtown. That's like the Wawa cookies. Yeah. Um, they are so all the different flavors. They have an oatmeal chocolate chip walnut cookie. That's my favorite. Oh, okay. That's my number nine. Woo. I'm sorry, number eight. Woo. I forgot my number there. Yeah, buddy. What you got for number eight, Mahogany? <laughs> uh oh. I have Pepperidge Farm Chessmen cookies. Those are my favorite, especially in banana pudding. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I forgot to put them on my list. Like, yeah. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. They're like a better Lorna, Lorna Doom cookie to me. I mean, oh, they're so good. Okay. Okay. Uh, my number eight is actually Lorna Doom shortbread cookie. Uh, yes. Uh, I did not stick to the uh, suggested serving size for <laughs> Lorna Doom. So that whole row. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lorna Doom. Lorna Doom's good. Mm. You know what's funny? When I was a kid, I didn't like Lorna Doom. 
Yeah, I was growing when I started. I, I appreciate them. <laughs> I, I appreciate them more when I got older. I needed yeah. festive cookies. I liked uh, animal crackers when I was young. <laughs> In the box. In the box. The red with box. That elastic, with the lion that, that and the elastic. string. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they don't make that. those anymore like that, do they? No. They're just in a big bag now. In a big bag or a huge container. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number seven. Number seven for me is a throwback cookie. It's called Suddenly S'mores. This was a cookie back in the late 80s where it was a s'mores cookie. The only thing about this is you had to warm it up for it to become an actual s'mores cookie. So it would come, you know, with the chocolate and the marshmallow. And I remember when I was in elementary school, before we moved here, we lived in Savannah. And at that elementary school, there was a microwave. So when I would get my box lunch, I would get bring my lunch to school. I would get like those a few of those cookies and I would ask the teacher, can I warm these up in the microwave? Yep. Oh, my God. They were so good. I don't know what happened to them. And I'm not a big fan of marshmallows, but those cookies, I mean, it was an actual marshmallow, a piece of chocolate. And then the two graham crackers. You put it in the microwave, suddenly s'mores. Look it up. You'll see. That is my number seven. What you got for number seven, Mahogany? For number seven, I have golden Oreos. Mm-hmm. I hope you guys didn't get together on this list like you did for the best producers last week. No. No, we didn't. were the same numbers last week. Mm, or whatever. This was on- <laughs> <laughs> if you feel bad about what you did, just say that. Whatever. Whatever. So Let's not open up, to, uh, you know, this show to conspiracy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No colluding happened here. Okay, at all. No collusion. Okay. Uh, my number seven is Nutter Butter. Very I just, good. I just love peanut butter cookies, but when you have two peanut butter cookies smashed in between, uh, or with uh, peanut butter filling in the middle, it's a win-win for me. That looked like peanuts too. Man, look at the joy on his face when he talks about it. I mean, it's nostalgic. Yeah. Because we used to put, you know, they came in a pack of four. Mm-hmm. Every, every pack. They still do. They still do. Uh-huh. Unless you buy the big um, pack like so I So I think I'm going to go to uh, Sam's Club on the way home. No, don't go to Sam's Club. Go to Winn-Dixie. Sam's Club going to give you too many cookies. That's what he this wants. This ain't for me. <laughs> Look, it's not for you? Oh, it's, it's not? for everybody. Baby girl loves. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, sure. Go to Sam's Club. Yeah. Didn't they used to come like in like a wafer nutter butter? Yeah, they did. They came in like a wafer thing. I don't. I reject that. I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, you remember peanut yeah, shaped wafer. peanut. Pe- it was peanut a peanut butter. shape now, but once upon a time they came in like a little. They were all connected like a wafer, a big wafer, and you have to. They were square wafers all connected. I ain't crazy. I remember that. I don't remember that. Like, yeah, yeah. Look it up, Mog. Yep. Mm. It did, didn't it? Uh Uh-huh. Told you. You know I'm good for a look up. Listen. (laughs) Number six. Number six for me. uh, This cookie I had once upon a time, and I was in South Florida. Stopped at a toll house. They had an actual toll house store in West Palm Beach. Mm. And they had these peanut butter cup cookies. It was like a, a, a cookie that was a cup. And a dollop of peanut butter and then swirl with chocolate. Oh, my God. That was the one of the best cookies I had. So number six is that Toll House peanut butter cup cookie. You can actually find it at the Florida Mall at the Toll House place if it's still there. Oh. Huh. You see how John's looking? He is. He's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's my number six. What you got, Mark? <laughs> my, my number six are like uh, the... Like, I don't really eat chocolate chip cookies, but I do eat these chocolate chip cookies, like the Pillsbury ones, but it has to be the ones, the fresh baked ones. Like, you have oh, to, I yeah. have to scoop them out and bake them myself. Yes, yes, yes. Um, But yeah, that's my number six. Okay. Okay. Um, my number six is the Otis Spunkmeyer oh, uh, chocolate chip cookie. Got about Otis. But it got to be the fresh ones. Yeah. That you put in the oven. And they actually have their own oven, Otis Spunkmeyer. Am I imagining things? Are wasn't there a teacher? Yes. When, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought so. When we were in high school, in that, she used um, to sell it in that yeah. that that in that same in that same hall. They sold. Oh, there was Otis Spunkmeyer. You mm-hmm. get some nachos, and yes. somebody was making popcorn. Okay, fresh popcorn. Okay, so, so I'm not you ain't going crazy. crazy. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. It was like two for a ridiculous amount, like two for a dollar or something. Like yes. That, uh, which was 
a ton. Well, back then it was a ton. Yeah, was a ton. <laughs> like damn, but you didn't really, you really didn't, didn't think about that as a right 16, 17 year old kid, right? But yeah, uh, those older Spunk Mar cookies were always on point, especially um, when you were fading away after first or second period. Mm-hmm. Fresh out the oven, baby. Mm-hmm. All right, number five, number five for me. This is a new cookie place that I, me and my wife have started to go to. We love it. They change flavors every week. It's called Crumble Cookies. I haven't been there yet. It is a great, great place. And every cookie that they've had has been phenomenal. Even the ones I didn't think I would like, I like. I can't just pinpoint one. This week they had a cinnamon bun cookie, a Buckeye cookie, which is a chocolate cookie with a big, thick dollop of peanut butter. Then it was covered in fudge. <laughs> They close on Sundays. You said a dollop? Yeah. A dollop, dollop of peanut butter. Mm-hmm. The cookies are served warm except for like one cookie they'll have that's served chilled. Didn't you say they were surprisingly low in calories? Low in calorie and sugar. Yes. For Weight Watchers, it's only six points. Yeah, go ahead and text me that name, please. I will. Thank and you, you said it was like, and I looked at one of those cookies. <laughs> they have a crumble cookie out by the loop. It then they have happen. one in Waterford Lakes that's coming soon. And then there's one that's already in Winter Park. Winter, winter Spring. No. No. Is that Winter, winter Spring? It's not Winter Park. I'll text it to you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. Because those cookies are pretty big. They are. They're like. But when you taste them, it's like they're thick. They're big. But I can see how they're not so much sugar because they're sweet enough. Okay, so they're not oversaturated with uh, correct with sugar. Correct. Okay. So that is you my said num- the loop, the loop okay. by the loop, right across. Well, but right before you get to the loop, it's over there. It's across the street. This is from, the other. This is the other shopping plaza. Yeah, you so know it's what not actually, directly in the loop. Right. You. It's right. In, it's right in front of a. Um, there's a Lowe's. There's a BJ's. It's right in yeah, front of that. Yeah, it's yeah, right in front of that yeah. BJ's next mm-hmm. to the Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. That's there. I know where. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's my number five. Number five, mahogany. Wawa M and M cookies. Mm. I never had those before. Do it. Really? <clears throat> Have you had the Publix M and M? Yeah. They're better than that. They bigger and mm. just to really. Me, they like this at Wawa, and it's just the one cookie. Right, mm-hmm. um, they stopped making the oatmeal raisin cookie, which used to be my favorite. But then I was like, I need an alternative for when I stop in here. Mm-hmm. And I don't even like plain M and M's. I will not eat yeah, no, plain M and M's. Like peanut, but mm-hmm. I will eat that cookie with those plain M and M's in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. They got snickerdoodle. I don't know. I've never been. I don't like the name. So I'm yeah. eat one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's, a snicker doodle is just a it's like a regular cookie with cinnamon and cinnamon sh- sugar. Oh, I know what it is. But she just but don't I, you don't like it. I, I taste it. I, the the over it's too much cinnamon for me. Okay, the one that crumble cookie when they had it a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. it was perfect. Mm. Okay, because sometimes the cinnamon can be excessive. Not on this one. Okay. Well, it's okay. I'll go to Crumble Cookie. Yes. See what see if it changes. <clears throat> what you got, Jim? Um, we're on number five, right? Yep. All right. My number five, this is uh Win Dixie and they don't make these anymore, but it's Win Dixie Big Sixty cookies. I remember them. Big sixty. <sighs> it was life. Oh, what is the big sixty? They were um they were sandwich cookies. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had a vanilla one and a chocolate one. Uh, vanilla cookie and a chocolate co- cookie with um, um, uh, cream filling in the center. It was like a sandwich cookie. I tagged y'all on Instagram for it. The okay. It's mm-hmm. it's a sandwich cookie with the vanilla on the top, wait, like part of the cookie. I don't remember. What? Oh, my God. Let me find them for yeah. you. Yeah. You'll know and them when you see them. They had like uh, little rivets or something. They weren't Some like a, they weren't design. like Oreo, but they... Ooh, these cookies were just so addicting. She used to fill the cookie jar in the house with them. Wow. 
like buy the big pack and just fill it up. Yeah, show it to me. They were cheap, but they were delicious. So delicious. I probably had them. I just I, I can't believe. Let me let me show you. Okay. Right. Oh, and it came up and said Win Dixie. Mm, wow. All oh right. wait, it's showing that Walmart has them. <laughs> really? <laughs> the big sixty. It says sandwich. No, it's like it's. Of course, it says great value, um, but it says the duplex cr- mm. sandwich cream cookies. I want it's big dollar, sixty. I want the big. Oh, that, that ain't it's big. a dollar twenty four for the pack. They always been super cheap cookies, but this is what they look like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking. Not about. quite like that though. No. No, not oh. quite like that. That's not the same thing. That's a cheap knockoff. Okay. okay. Well, let me find it. Let me find it. Right. Well, where you <laughs> find that? I'm gonna go to number four. Okay. Number four for me is the regular Oreos. I'm a regular Oreo man. And when I used to drink milk, I used to love to dip them in the milk. It made my chest tight. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Give me the regular Oreos, baby. Mm. Number regular four. Oreos. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being regular. <laughs> Number four, mahogany. Nut or butter. Okay. All right. Nothing else need to be said about that. I ate some on the way up here. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so you know it's real. All uh-huh. right. Uh-huh. Number four for you, John? The Oreo lemon cookies. Now that's good. Mm. They are good. And I don't know if they are already double stuffed. It seems like uh, they never mention those being double stuffed. But I think I've never seen them I double think stuffed. they're double stuffed. They are? Okay. I mean, yeah. Compared to regular, the regular Oreo filling, mm-hmm. uh, they give you a lot of lemon. Uh Limit hmm. on this, so okay. Number three, number three for me is McDonald's old school white box chocolate chip cookies. I never had them. Oh my god, those were the old school, they were in a white box, they were many little small chocolate chip cookies. Those things were life. I don't know what made them get away from them. I don't know why they stopped doing them. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> they got these old nasty. I don't like the cookies now. They be taking away the stuff that people want. <laughs> Let me tell you something. These cookies were so good. And you want me to tell you the sad part about them? I never ate them as a kid. I ate them like as I was in college. Mm-hmm. And shortly thereafter, they went away. <laughs> but they left that big of an impression on me that they had to be my number three. Mm. Okay. Mahogany, what you got for number three? Strawberry plank cookies. You know the it's the two planks that come in one pack. Strawberry plank cookies? It's a down south thing, one moment. Hey. I'm from the south. Deep south. We are in the deep south. Well, Exit not one. Really. Oh. Okay. <laughs> like stage planks, they're called. Stage planks. Ah, do you know I've never tried them? Let me tell you how. I've seen them all through my childhood. Now, and I, I never was tried in them. Jacksonville. Yeah. Never seen it. And went to a store, a uh-huh. bitty store. Yeah. Like a little bitty side store, right? Uh-huh. They had strawberry, lemon. Yeah, vanilla. I always see them and I never tried them. I'm going to have to try it. The strawberry one for sure. Yeah, I can see it in your faces. I'm going to find some today. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to find them. It's fine. And I'm not sharing them. I I don't want you to. Because I think you you really have showed that you're not No, no. You know what? I would share those before I share my number one. So, yeah. I'm disappointed. I can't find one image of these big 60. And I'm looking too. Like, I can't find them either. I can't Hmm. find them. Okay. They show the ad where they had the big 60 cookie. I see it right here, but they don't show the cookie. I don't want to see the... And then it's black and white Amazon. too. They have everything. Mm. Oh, they do. So what you got for uh, number three, John? I got chocolate chip cookies from Golden Corral back in the day. They used to make them fresh. Oh yeah, they did. They were yes, nice they did. And soft. Yes, they did. Um, yes, they did. Whenever we would go, we would bring a Ziploc bag. Yeah. <laughs> and my brother and I would. Um, in intervals within a 15 or 20 minute span we would just go up and <laughs> we would you know take our plates up to the uh, dessert bar mm-hmm. and just start 
loading these cookies mm-hmm. into, uh, to our plates, <laughs> go back to the uh, go back to the table. My mom would have her uh, the Ziploc bags in her purse. And we just start loading up these things in our purse. Those and um, um, yeast rolls, we start loading up. Uh, I appreciate your mom. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, I have. Because you can't take any doggy bags when you go to go and corral. Who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My granny faithfully had her. <laughs> she rolled it up in the. She wouldn't take a doggy bag. She just rolled up in some napkins. College? Yeah. Tuh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Refrigerator be stocked by the time we go back around. Yes, sir. Mm. Well, I tell you what, it's so funny when I would go to the Golden Corral or Ryan, well, Golden Corral, I would eat so much that by the time I got the dessert, I would be so mad because I'd be literally stuffing the chocolate chip cookies because I'd be so full, but I would have to eat them because they yeah, were so good. You, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Number, we getting down to it. Mm-hmm. Number two. My number two. Almost was my number one, but I had to be smart about it because I had to be honest with myself, which was my number one. Number two is famous Amos chocolate chip with pecans. Mm. Woo! Those are my favorite. Second favorite. And number two. Fire. I will. Yeah. You. you I, I have to avoid them. And it has to be the one with pecans because... Um, I like the regular chocolate chip, but the one with pecans, they hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> and I, when I see them in the store, I have to just keep walking because if I buy a box, that box will be done the next day. Oh, wow. Yeah, that good. So Famous Amos. Famous. Yeah. That's my number two. I forgot all about Famous Amos. I'm mm, 24 carat embarrassed. I didn't. And ashamed. I didn't. I didn't. I couldn't. R.I.P. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My um number two is Girl Scout Lemon Ups. Oh, ah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, they're good. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Is it the one with the coating on the bottom of it? Mm. Or are those no, the those sandwich? are sandwiches? The sandwiches. The mm-hmm. sandwiches. Okay. They got rid of those, didn't they? No. Or some, we, troop, some troops carry them and some troops don't. Yeah, that's what yeah. happened. I don't understand why. I don't Me know. Me either. Hey, it's like they get from the same distribution center, but... I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. Number two? Uh, my number two is um, frosted oatmeal cookies from... Ah, uh, the frosted. It, it, from, uh, I believe it was the Family Dollar or Dollar General because mm-hmm. they were soft. It's the Family Dollar. <sighs> and I don't know if they actually put um, bricks of cocaine in these cookies. <laughs> Not the... Not moving weight. What? Yeah. <sighs> but they are so addictive because they come in a rose as well. Yeah. And once again, I don't, I try to stay within the um, suggested serving amount, mm-hmm. but one of them rows got to go. Yeah. Every time I open up that cart, one of the rows got to go. Just the whole row? The whole row. The whole row. Okay. Ah. So, Nothing wrong with that, brother. All right. We got to it. Number one. Number one, y'all gonna look at me and you may say I'm a simp, but I don't care because I'm married. I'm not going to judge. Simp? And Number one water. is my wife cookies. You a smart man. All right. You she makes man. the best. She only does it like twice a year. You smart. I have to like talking to doing it more than twice, but. You should so I can see what's going on. Oh my God. I'm here for it. What Mahogany. kind? She what makes kind? sugar, butter, chocolate chip, white chocolate. Has she done peanut butter? I don't think she did peanut butter. Oh my god! But they're so. I'm I'm here, I'm here for some sugar. Girl. So good. Heavy suggestion hint. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think she'd do it if I ask her. She would. She would. That that's I listen. <sighs> he said, "Y'all gonna think I'm a simp, boy? Nah, you no. Nah. Nah, you said the right thing. <sighs> Those cookies. I said you're a smart man. And these are handmade. I mean, these are. Homemade, homemade, fresh. Well, things are made with love. from 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 the dough. She she does everything, and they are so divine. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> that's my number one. Knee. <laughs> yeah, I got to. It almost looked metaphysical for you. Man. Yeah, that's my number one. Okay, so my number one, and I don't. Um, I'm gonna ask her if she'll make some for you guys. Okay, I have a friend of mine named Alana, who is a chef. 
mm-hmm. in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, and she made me like years ago, maybe I don't even know how many years ago, she made me some oatmeal raisin craisin cookies from scratch. I ain't gonna eat them because it's raisin. I mean, that's fine. More for me. I could um, take out well, more for me though. too. No, it's I'll take his portion. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. But it's oatmeal raisin craisin cookies. Oh. All together. Okay. I like crazy, and I just don't know. And I, like I really cookies. be like, don't ask me for none. Really? Like, don't touch my cookies. Like, leave me alone. She gonna have to make an extra couple for y'all because I'm eating mine. Oh wow! So I'm gonna see if I can harass her enough to make me some. I believe raisin is the devil's chocolate chip. It's okay. <laughs> 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 My grace, <laughs> the devil's chocolate chip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if we were actually to go after any one of your raisin craisin oatmeal cookies, you would lose your hand. Wow. That was going to be my next. Uh, you would draw back a nub. All right. And I mean that. Don't touch them. From the bottom. Just get you home. Of my heart. So I would be a single amputee. Is that what you tell me? Don't touch them. But if you go with the other hand, you're going to be double. Get your own. Mm. So what I'll do is, for your safety and my criminal record being great. Mm-hmm. Don't touch them. <laughs> or lack thereof. I'll bring you <laughs> cookies and leave mine at home. Don't touch them. Mm-hmm. No me toques. So those. <laughs> mm. Adios mio. Yeah. Don't touch them. No me toques. Okay. Don't touch I'm them. a giving person. You heard him say it. Don't touch it. But not, but you draw it's the line. It's nostalgic. You draw it's the line. It's nostalgic. Like, That's where you draw your line, though? My lines have been drawn a couple places, but... Don't touch it. No me toques. Mm-hmm. No me toques. Mm-hmm. Don't touch it. Mm-hmm. I hope I said that right. You think I said that right? Mm-hmm. Iris going to let me know. Yeah, she'll let you know. Okay, She'll cool. tell you. I think Ed can let me know, too. Yeah, he can, too. Okay. I'll ask her when I leave. She'll let you know. Okay. And if I didn't say it right... Don't touch it. I apologize, folks. Don't touch it. What you got, John? Number one. Uh, <laughs> okay, my number one, they're white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. This is from Moe's, but when Moe's first came out. Mm. Not the current formula they have now. Because that previous formula, when they first came out, tasted like white chocolate and macadamia nuts, and then a hint of fruity pebbles. Oh, wow. Uh wow. Yeah, back when we worked at um uh, the men's warehouse, I yeah. would always pick up a, a couple of those. We always Moe's was so different back then. It was period. fantastic yeah. when it first came out. Yeah. And they I don't want to get into how people or or, or in organizations tweak formulas and stuff like that it mm-hmm. wasn't broken in the you first want place. Crazy? Oh man, I forgot about Subway. Damn, I forgot about Subway too. So did I. Damn, they had some good cookies. Okay. Was it the sugar cookie? They had sugar cookies. They got sugar cookies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I had. You know, I never did have the most cookie back then. You did not? No. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. I was too busy eating that damn Billy Baru, though. Boy, you used to put a hurt. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You want to see something amazing? The When Moe's used to really stuff their burritos and to sit there and watch John devour a stuffed, big-ass burrito was a sight to see. I want a burrito. But it wasn't just a burrito. Remember the nachos? <laughs> yes. Remember the nachos? Too? Yes. Oh, yes. they got nachos. Yeah, they got the nachos. You ain't never been to I'm Moe's? Hung, I'm going to, I've never eaten at Moe's. I see it all the time. Never eating it. It is a, I think it's, it's it's a healthier version of Chipotle. Healthier than Chipotle? Yeah. It's Chipotle ain't really that, vet, isn't that healthy. It don't matter. I don't really eat it that much. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but um, <laughs> they be stingy with this portion. I'm like, girl, that is not your chicken. Hey, for real. You better put more than that little But then when you get the there. little vegan alternative, they want to pile that stuff of on. Course. Man, man, look, hey. <laughs> I be like, that's what we doing? Like, you can skip me on the rice. I don't really need that much Yeah, rice. I don't need chicken, that I need much protein. damn rice. Yeah, I tell them give me more rice. <laughs> they see my big self coming. They give me the regular. Do you get portion. the burritos or you get the bowl? I get the bowl. I get more food in the bowl. Yeah, yeah. Like load me up on rice. I want. Can I get uh, white rice with double rice? I haven't had a burrito in a while. I always do the bowls. And they just coat the bottom with that rice. I said, give me some more rice, please. No, they take the <laughs> they take the spoon right, and it's a heaping amount of rice on the spoon. And then they be like, 
Don't, don't you put that rice back after you scoop it up for me. Put that thing in my bowl. Um, I, I get the tacos if I do go to Chipotle now. I just get the little tacos, you know, a little something to keep me right. And then yeah. I get a whole real meal later. Okay. I might pay $90 for some oxtail soon. You know oh what I'm saying? Gosh. <laughs> $90 for some oxtails? That's how much I'm, I'm exaggerating. They're, they close but too. they're expensive. They, they they went up since, you know, things. Inflation. Mm-hmm. They go up every quarter, seem like. I got friends that cook for me. I'm a Tiffany. All right. I hope we get the supply chain thing oxtails. right. Mm-hmm. Get these prices down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They yeah. went from like eighteen dollars, nineteen dollars to like twenty-seven, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-seven. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, that was our top ten list. We kind of jumped out of there um, from what we usually do. John, what do you have for the American history fact today? Thank you, sir. Uh, let me bring that up. All right. The American history fact. Uh, this is about a. Uh, medical doctor named Charles R. Drew, born on June 3rd, 1904 in uh, Washington, D.C. He attended Amherst College in Massachusetts, where his athletic prowess in track and football earned him the Mossman Trophy as the man who contributed the most to athletics for four years. He then taught biology and served as a coach at Morgan State College in Baltimore, before entering McGill University School of Medicine in Montreal. As a medical student, Drew became an Alpha Omega Alpha Scholar and won the J. Francis Williams Fellowship, given annually to the top five students in his graduating class. He received his medical degree in 1933 and served his first appointment as a faculty instructor in pathology at Howard University, from 1935 to 1936. He then became an instructor in surgery and an assistant surgeon at Freedman's Hospital, a federally operated facility associated with Howard University. In 1938, Drew was awarded a two-year Rockefeller Fellowship in Surgery and began postgraduate work, earning his Doctor of Science in Surgery at Columbia University. His doctoral thesis, Banked Blood, was based on an exhaustive study of blood preservation techniques. It was during his research on this topic at Columbia's Presbyterian Hospital that his ultimate destiny in serving mankind was shaped, as World War II created a vital need for information and procedures on how to preserve blood. With wartime casualties mounting and the wounds and injuries seen by physicians becoming more severe, the need for blood plasma intensified. Drew as a leading authority in the field, was selected as the full-time medical director of the Blood for Britain project, and he supervised the successful collection of 14,500 pints of vital plasma for the British in February of 1941. Drew was appointed director of the uh, first American Red Cross blood bank in charge of blood for use by the U.S. Army and Navy. During this time, Drew argued that authorities should stop excluding the blood of African Americans from plasma supply networks. However, after the armed forces ruled in 1942 that the blood of African Americans would be accepted but would have to be stored separately from that of the whites, he resigned his official post. Mm. Mm. All right. But his accolades continued. The NAACP awarded him the Spingarn Medal in 1944 in recognition of his work on the British and American projects. Virginia State College presented him an honorary doctor of science degree in 1945, as did his alma mater, Amherst, in 1947. Let me see here. The last bit I have here is Drew returned to Freedman's Hospital in Howard University, where he served as a surgeon and professor of medicine from 1942 to 1950. And um, that's essentially it. After 1950, he met his untimely demise in a uh, a car accident back in Alabama. Oh, wow. But um, that is Mr. Charles R. Drew, your American history fact. Thank you, sir. For this episode. Enjoyed it as usual. Thank you. Uh, So I know we had talked about earlier when I went on the 
little mini rant in the beginning about everything that's going on with the pandemic. And, you know, I spoke about the person that we know that is a friend that is battling for her life right now. And so, you know, not to get morbid with that or anything, you know, but it's just very important that you do with that because loss, loss of life is something else. Um, especially experiencing from someone close and it just, you never, you can never prepare for it. It, it, even if you are being prepared for it, you, you really can never sit there and say, okay, this is about to happen. I know it's about to happen. I'm good. No, it, it, it doesn't work out that way. Have the mass you guys, have you had to experience something, uh, 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 losing a loved one that was very close to you in your life? Yeah, for me, um, I'll go first. Yeah, I lost my mother when I was like seven. Wow. Um, seven years old? Yeah, and it was very uh, sudden. Basically, uh, went to my grandmother's house. At the time, we were living up this way in Sanford. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and she um, it was like, okay, you're going to go to your grandmother's house before school starts, spend some time with her. So she drove me back down to Homestead. Mm-hmm. Was there, dropped me off that Friday morning, woke up Saturday morning, and my room was full of people. And she told me, I'll pick you up on Monday. And my room was full of people. And when I looked around, I was like, well, what's going on? It's not my birthday yet. Because it was like a month before my eighth birthday. And I was just like, I'm a kid, you know? Like, I'm like, oh, it's not my birthday yet. Why is everybody here? And people just started crying. And I was like looking around like, what's going on? And my grandmother, the soldier that she is, like, she's so strong. Um, she came in the room and she looked at me and she says, well, baby, your mama's not coming back to pick you up. And I was like, okay, what do you mean? Why? She told me she coming Monday. Cause my mother's word was bond. Like that's the law. You know, she said it, she's going to do it. And she was like, well, she went to be with God. And I'm looking around cause I still didn't understand what that meant, mm-hmm. you know, at seven. And so you got people crying and people holding me, rocking me. So as a child, then you begin to feel the vibration of the room. You mm-hmm. feel the frequency of the room. And I'm like, this is sad. Like, she's really not coming to get me. Why is she not coming to get me? Because the registry wasn't, oh, she's gone to heaven or she died or whatever. Didn't even really understand death. I knew previous to that, her father passed when I, my grandfather passed when I was five. But I was really too young to understand that. I just remember him being sick. And then at seven, um, my mother passed. So basically, like, it was within... Like overnight, I went from having my mom to not having my mom. Wow. Yep. Um, how did you, how have you been able to deal with that? That's okay. That's okay. Take your time. I can tell you that it doesn't get easier. You learn to survive through it. Um, I am blessed to have my brother and my sister. Um, They... We always typically come together when we have any type of issue. I mean, we lean on each other a lot because they were incredibly young. I'm the oldest of the three. Mm -hmm. So when it comes down to my strength and reasons to be okay, they're it. You know, I have beautiful nieces and nephews. Um, and it's not always hard. You know, I just basically, I wish that she could see me now. You know what I'm saying? I wish she could see what she put 
instilled into her children, although very young. I wish she could see, you know, the fruits of my labor. You know, my mother wore all the accessories. She was very much into fashion, which I see in my sister. She's a nurturer, which I see in my sister and myself. She is a lover, which I see in all of us, you know. And um, when I look at my siblings, like all of us carry something of her, you know. Um, so it's just like, she just, she, she's here, you know, she's everywhere all the time, but it's just that I know that, um, a little things in life would have been a little different. You know, we would have been, we, we were separated young, um, for a little while, you know, and as soon as I was old enough, I moved up here to be with them. Um, so it's just, you know, every day is a day I kind of just live to make her proud. Like I, I live every day, like she watching, you know, like she's going to be like, okay, I'm proud of you. Cause I know she would be. And, um, I just, although it's hard, you know, but there are times where I'm just like, she would never want me to be sad. She would never want me to be upset about, you know, anything. Like she spoiled me to death. <laughs> and I remember that, you know, my mom was the mom who used to bring cupcakes to my class on Fridays, you know, who used to take me to the park, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Who all we dressed alike. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that was like, as a kid, that's who you look to. That was my best friend, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it's hard sometimes. And I tell anybody who has, you know, lost a parent or anybody close, we know Nobody can tell you how to grieve. Nobody can tell you how to hurt. Nobody can tell you how to get through things, yeah. especially if they have not experienced that loss. That's right. But we all process differently. Mm-hmm. You know, each of my siblings and myself, we process differently and at different times. You know, mm-hmm. her birthday was July 28th, you know, and it was just a day that I kind of just took to be peaceful within myself. I checked on them to make sure they were OK. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we just chose joy. Yeah. And that's just it's just not easy. And it doesn't go away. Because, you know, life hasn't been hard, but it hasn't been easy, if that makes sense. Oh, no, no, no. But, um, you know, that that was that it ma- it makes you numb after a while. Like like once you lose like once you lose a parent or somebody that close. Not saying death is easy, but other things seem easier. Like it, 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 it takes major like like super close like i can definitely offer my condolences to anyone sincerely and i can hear of people passing but there's nothing like the devastation of losing your mom yeah there's no pain in the world like that mm. nothing I, nothing has hurt me as bad as that but i i carry on mm. so it's i'm gonna be okay mm-hmm. <laughs> overall i'm gonna be okay sorry y'all <laughs> that's not <laughs> Apologize for that. Um, so your your mother's mom, your grandmother is the one that raised you. Yeah, my mom's mom raised me, mm. and I'll say she did a good job. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've I've never seen strength like my grandmother's strength. I've never. I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't cry, but I've never seen her drop a tear. Mm-hmm. She's always been strong for everybody else that you've seen. Yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, um, the only time I knew to hurt it. Like I think I think I heard it mm-hmm. when I had my first surgery in two thousand nine because mm-hmm. it took me a long time to wake up. And mm-hmm. so when she heard my voice, she said, "Okay, I just want to hear your voice." And she rushed off the phone. So I think that that was yeah, when yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, um, I think like she just has always displayed phenomenal strength. Mm-hmm. Like I've I've I don't know a woman stronger than her. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah. My lashes. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just something that I'm glad that you you're dealing. And like you said, you said something very important there. You can't tell someone how to grieve. Right, right. You can't tell somebody how to move on from you know the loss of someone. You yeah. know because that that just sticks with you. Um, yeah. Um, wow. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. John, have you had to experience anything like that? Um, that close to the vest? No. Mm-hmm. No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to actually have both my parents still with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still have uh, both my grandparents uh, are still with me. Mm-hmm. Um, the... Uh, 
closest thing I've. I haven't had I haven't, I haven't had an opportunity um, to experience um, anything such as that. Um, uh, my thing with um, you know experiencing death or dealing with death uh, is I guess I'm just kind of weird. I really don't have too many emotions to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe because it hasn't been that close to the vest as of yet. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned something. I think this is before we actually started recording today. Uh, you don't know how you would deal with uh, your mother passing away, and mm-hmm. I would probably be the same uh, if my mother or my father passed away. Um, I can say I've had um, an uncle die on my uh, dad's side, who was uh, my dad's brother, and. Um, we were talking about this earlier. You, you've seen my dad. Mm-hmm. He is a um, man's man. <laughs> yeah. He's a man's man. Mm-hmm. Love him to death. Uh, never uh, seen him react the way he did when my uncle passed. That was his brother. He, and he referenced him as his baby brother. Wow. I've never heard him utter those words mm-hmm. ever. As far as his baby brother passing. Same thing for uh, my grandmother, my great uncle. He passed. Mm -hmm. I was more upset, not at the fact that they passed away, but what the effects would be as a result of them passing Mm -hmm. on, in the case of my father and in the case of my grandmother. Because my grandmother was really close to uh, her brother, her older brother, mm-hmm. falling around everywhere. Mm-hmm. And he just hated that. Sometimes <laughs> he would uh, beat the brakes off of her from time. <laughs> he didn't want her following. Fallen. Yeah. So um, my grandmother, she's one of those tough, mm-hmm. stoic figures. I've never seen her shed a tear. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think she's one of those ones that want you to see her in that state. Right. Um, I don't know how I would react to her um, crying. I've never seen her shed a tear. Right. She's I'm, just cut from a different mold. I probably fall out. <laughs> yeah. I start crying. I'm, I, I'm, yeah. I'm. Uh, <laughs> she get a cold and I'm sensitive. All right. So <laughs> I, I'm more so um, affected by how other people deal with it and how they respond to it. Mm-hmm. Even when. um. What was it? And this guy wasn't even related to me. And you've heard about the Aaron Rodgers, not Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Hernandez story. Mm-hmm. I watched that on Netflix. And, mm-hmm. um, even though I didn't have a connection to him, he had a daughter mm-hmm. or has a daughter mm-hmm. who's not going to grow up knowing who her father is. Right. And I had just become a father at that time for a few years. And for whatever reason, That affected me, Mm. that she was not going to have her daddy around. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, heading into work. It might have been around about the same time that um, I had lost my Uncle Curl. Mm -hmm. And I headed into work and um, lost it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while I was on I-4. right before I got to uh, John Young. And I'm trying to hold it together as I'm sitting here discussing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though this man, I had no connection to this man or or anything. Yeah. I lost it. I ended up going home um, after that. Wow. I got into work. Supervisor noticed something was wrong. I said, I can't, for whatever reason, I can't deal today. I had to go. And I think, um, yeah, it was actually the same, right about the same time Uncle Curl passed. I remember going to my mom's house and seeing how she was because she was affected too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm just more so um, affected by how other people react to to death and yeah. besides myself, which is weird. No, it's not weird. It's well, it's foreign to me. Yeah. The feeling is weird for you. Yeah. Okay. So, but once again, I, 
knock on wood, it, it, it doesn't happen anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, I want my mom uh, to be around and I want my dad to be around um, for a long time, even though I know that's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want them to go before me. I don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to have to deal. I don't with want them. to have them to deal with me, them having to bury their son or my brother. Yeah. Before them. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm I'm almost certain mom goes. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't think I'll ever be prepared for something like that, regardless of how old I get. I don't think I'll ever be prepared for something like that. There's no way to prepare that for that. Like even now, like. Like, you know, you, you you say, okay, yeah, somebody's older. Okay, yeah, they're getting old. Okay, yeah, all these things happen. But then it's like, even with my, like, God forbid anything happens to my grandmother anytime soon. And she's in her 80s. And I'm just still like, mm. those. that's one of the few that'll hit me that hard, you know. And this is just a lot of things I can tolerate, a lot of things I can deal with. But, like, stuff like that, I don't think with my grandmother it would be... Um, it would be something that I would recover from quickly. I lost a friend. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking about your friends fighting. I lost a friend April 15th um, to COVID mm-hmm. that I had been friends with 34, almost 34 years. And that hit me for the moment. Like the initial shock of it was, was like, wait, no, I just talked to her, you know. But then like 40 minutes later, I was like, all right, I can't question it. And kept pushing. And uh, I have a friend of mine who was like, that is, I don't know how you do that. I was like, look, it's a lot of things I I will probably hurt from, but I know that that death in some way, shape or form is inevitable. You know, you can't escape it when it's your time, it's your time. Um, But you can't, you can't prepare for that. It's, you can, you can, and the thought of it, like I've been just by myself, like, okay, how would I mentally prepare myself if something happened to my grandmother? And the thought makes me break now. Mm. So it's just like, like I, and, and when you talk to her, well, whenever he call me home, I'm ready. You mm-hmm. know, older people, it's fine. I'm ready. And I'd be like, nah, lady, uh-uh, nah, give me about 10 more. Like, you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'd be like, don't say that. She'd be like, well, Mahogany, it's the truth. And I'd be like, man, I don't know. But like, yeah. it would have to be like ridiculously close to me um, for me to probably like to even react but I'm just not shocked by it like I would have been. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to add to that. Like, even if if you were to expire Mm -hmm. too soon for me, yeah, I probably wouldn't be able to take that either. Yeah. Yeah, that would. mm. You, um, my homegirl, Jamika, Mm -hmm. been through too much. Yeah. And the fact that I wouldn't be able to talk to you or uh, hear your voice because you passed down so much wisdom. And that resource will be gone forever. I don't, I'd probably have to get some therapy or something. Yeah, my home girl was my therapist. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> she was a counselor. Yeah, life coach. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd have to go seek therapy at that particular point because. Well, I'm glad you said that. Um, I had to do the same. I had to seek therapy. I essentially lost my best friend. Oh, this shit heavy. I'm sorry. Uh, it's all right. My my granny is what I call her. She was my best friend. Um, Let me tell you something. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, when we went up to Tallahassee, mm-hmm. just to see how happy your granny was mm-hmm. that you were staying at her house, it was like four or five days or something like that. Yeah. Just how she prepared the, the pallet for us to yes. sleep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah, no put room. you on the floor in a minute. It was no room. Everybody had all the little rooms occupied. But we were comfortable, man. Yes. We were so comfortable. She was so welcome and so invited and so inviting. 
We had one bathroom. Did she put you seven. in the living room on the pallet? Yes. yes. Okay. In the living room on the pallet right in front of the couch. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> she moved that little coffee table out the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to, we were awkward. comfortable as I don't know what. Uh, she took really good care of us. Didn't like us staying out late <laughs> at all. When I locked my house up. <laughs> she I stayed up, though. Up. Well, she's a, she was a night owl. Yeah, she stayed up. I think they all are, though. She is a night. She was owl. waiting for her grandbaby to come home. Yeah, and her two knucklehead friends. Yeah, <laughs> his two knucklehead friends, not hers. Yeah, she. You know, um, I will tell you that when you know she got ill and. We moved her down here. My grandmother was a very strong lady, independent. Um, she even caught my wife off guard because when she first met my wife, uh, she started speaking Spanish to my wife. My wife's like, whoa, granny. She said, oh, yeah. She said, uh, when I lived in Miami, you know, I worked with Cuban ladies and, you know, they taught me Spanish. I learned a little Spanish. My grand- grandma's a nerd. She, she's very I smart. She would have taught me some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she was speaking to her in Spanish and everything. Um my granny was my best friend. You know, I spent so many summers with her, either staying with her or her coming to us. Then it, as I got older, went and picked her up and, you know, all those things. And, you know, as she got older, um, you know, she became ill. Mm-hmm. And when we were at the doctor's office, I remember when all that happened, it was just me and my aunt and she did not want anybody to know what the doctor said. And we had to promise her. So I had to hold on to that Mm. because I promised her, Mm -hmm. but it did something to me because I had never in my life seen my aunt cry and my aunt cried right before my eyes. And so I had to console her, but my grandmother was just sitting there with a smile on her face. And I said, Granny, why? I asked, I said, Granny, why are you smiling? She said, he don't know. Only God knows. The Lord knows when it's my time. The Lord already told me my time. He don't know. Right. And she was so right because the expectancy that he gave her, she outlived that by a whole lot. <laughs> and she did not go down, down, you know, yeah. um, it was to date, no, it was to date the toughest time I ever had. I lost my mind, like literally lost my mind. My wife one day caught me. Um, I called her hysterical. I don't even know what I said to her, but I had left the house in a shirt and my underwear. And got in my car and just drove. And what happened is I had took a lunch break and I came home. Mm-hmm. And this is a, I had never, I had, I had not really grieved her death. Right. Mm-hmm. When she, when we went to the funeral, when we had the funeral, I cried when we got to the church because I saw the funeral, the hearse. I didn't go inside until the casket was closed. I didn't want to see her like that. That's I could what, not yeah, see her like that. That did me in. Um, so, I cried then, but then I thought I was okay. Mm-hmm. I had to stay strong for my, cause we had a small knit family. It was, mm-hmm. it's me. My, my grandma had two girls, my mom, and my aunt, my aunt had two girls. My mom had me and my sister. <laughs> so I had to stay strong as the man mm-hmm. for so everybody. You to together, like I got this. I yeah. Got this. So I stayed outside. I cried. I was okay. And, um, one day, took a lunch and ran home to grab something to eat. Cause at that time we live about 15 minutes from the job mm-hmm. and my normal routine since I could ever remember was to call my granny and ask her what, what you, what you doing, what you have for lunch. Yep. <laughs> so I went to my cell phone, went to Dow and, um, it, was turned off and so it hit me then you know um and so I just had a mental breakdown um I didn't know my 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 wife I I guess I can't remember how it all happened I call her speaking gibberish and 
um, her and my mom showed up and I was talking to her on the phone. And when I came to, I was on the side of I-4 where you could see where the citrus bowl was outside my car in my underwear, my in my shirt. Surprisingly, no cops, or anything came. I was that out of it. And finally I came to and I drove back home. Um, I had not been myself. I, I was short on people. I had snapped on people. I was, I, I just wasn't a pleasant person to be around. And, um, it was because I hadn't grieved her death the way I should have. Mm-hmm. Because when we went to Tallahassee, I, I made a declaration. I said that this would be the last time I ever come back to Tallahassee because I had no other reason coming back to Tallahassee. Because the reason for me coming was gone. So mm-hmm. I finally decided to do something that we as black people, black men don't do Mm -hmm. go seek therapy. Um, I didn't feel comfortable doing it. So I said, okay, you know what? I'll go seek it with my pastor. Right. Cause I feel comfortable with him. I've known him since I was a little kid, all these other things. The one thing I I appreciate about my pastor, pastor ring is that when we talk, it wasn't this open up your Bible turn to this. You know what I mean? We talked. I had about five, no, six sessions with him. The first five sessions, we would sit down and he'll say, hey, Ronald, for those that don't know Ronald's my first name, Mm -hmm. he'll say, hey, Ronald, how you feeling today? I will open up my mouth and before any word could be uttered, tears would just come and I would just weep for the first 25 to 30 minutes, non stop to where I'm weeping to there's no tears coming down my face anymore. I'm just weeping. And he would just let me do it. But that's good that you had a safe Every space. Every single <clears throat> time mm-hmm. until that sixth time. When he said, Ronald, how you feeling today? I opened up my mouth. I said, I'm feeling good. Mm-hmm. It took me all that time to mourn. I, 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 before that point, I had never experienced loss and I didn't think I could deal with that. And then two years later, my, so it's, it is, you know, my, my aunt's the oldest and my mom. Mm-hmm. Then my aunt had her first child, her, my cousin, who's 10 years older than me. Then she had her second child, my cousin, who's four years older than me, then me. Then 10 years later, my sister. I know you was mad with Kendrick. We, well, I, you know what's funny? I prayed for a sister. Oh, okay. I asked God for a sister. I kid you not. That was my prayer. I told my mom I always wanted I a sister. I was mad when the mother was <laughs> I was happy. Um, so two years after my grandmother passed away. Um, we all dealt with her death in different ways. My cousin passed the youngest one. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, wow, we getting hit back to back. But I noticed a difference with me. Um, I was able to cope not deal, but cope better. Yeah. Um, it was tough. And to this day, when it comes to her, my cousin, Tamika, when it comes to my granny, I still grieve in my own way. But there's always, it's no longer tears of pain it's tears of joy because I look at and, and, and I listen to you and I and I got teary eyed listening to you because here I am crying and upset that my grandmother passed away at 80 years old, almost 81. I got 30, what, 32 years or thir- no, it wasn't 32. It was 30, I think. Um, 
Yeah, 30 years with her. Mm -hmm. My mom's still here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, I look at all of that. And I always go back to this philosophy of no matter how bad you think you got it. Yeah. It's always somebody else has it worse. And so for in my selfish ways, and even so, I, I also have to think about my, my mom. She lost her mother. As much as my granny was my best friend, that was her mother. Right. Um, that she lost. And so all that, putting all that into perspective, I just said, you know, I can grieve, but I have to be thankful for the times that I had with her mm -hmm. and all the memories that I made with her. And that's when I came to that. Now, I lose someone close to me like that again. I'm not going to say that, oh, I'm going to be okay. I may not be okay, but now I know that, hey, I can go talk to someone to help me. That is so important. It is so important when you have lost someone, and especially for men, I'm going to talk to us men here for a minute. When we've lost someone close to us, it's very hard for us to be able to display any signs of weakness, what we deem weakness, because it's not really weakness. It's just, you know, having emotion. Um, it's okay to go talk to someone. You don't have to broadcast it to the world. You don't have to let everybody know that's between you and your therapist or whoever you, you, you want to talk to and help you through that. But you need to go see someone and talk to someone because it's never easy. It's never it's never going to get easy and it's not easy. And the way that you grieve and the way that you deal with it, there is no expiration date on that. You could right. grieve that for the rest of your life. You definitely feel it. Yeah. Like, and, and I think a misconception that a lot of people have is that men aren't supposed to. You know what I'm saying? I respect holistically any man that is able to recognize within himself that he can go or he needs to go talk to somebody. It is really important because I know at, women, we are emotional by design. Mm -hmm. Society leads us to believe that men are not supposed to. You're always supposed to be strong, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it's it's important that men have partners that understand if they cry mm -hmm. and that are, comf you know, that are very much like, um, like, a, like so bring solace to them. Like, mm -hmm. somebody, your woman has to bring in peace, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If she's going to be a part of your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that... um. It, it is definitely something I would tell anybody. Um, my friend that passed was actually my life coaching counselor, mm. but she knew me the best. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So it yeah. was like, but it would always be unbiased <clears throat> um, and open di dialogue between us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I say that to say that um, she counseled a lot of men who just didn't have anybody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And not to go over any slippery slope, but. As a woman, I know for a fact that if you don't listen to your man, he's going to find somebody to listen. Yeah. And, so. and when, why you say that? Let me say this while it's <laughs> on my mind. Shouts out to my wife, because at that moment in time, we were not married. And the way I was, she could have up and said, hey, I can't do this. But she loves you. Yeah. She loves you then. Yeah. And that's what love does. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. 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 And you can tell her, I, yeah, I love the way y'all look at each other. <laughs> I do. I see it all the time. I pay attention to the little things and I love that. Um, support is very important. Yeah. A genuine, unconditional love is very important. Mm -hmm. um, and dear males, man, black man, kings, whoever y'all are, it is okay yeah. to go talk to somebody That's about right. things that are bothering you. That's right. And no one should ever, just like women aren't, shouldn't be made to feel like, us expressing ourselves as nagging or aggravating. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for men. If somebody thinks that you feeling as you being soft or whatever, then that's their problem, not your problem. That's right. Go ahead and talk to somebody, get you some help and cry. And it's okay cry. to cry. You don't have to be oh hard for goodness. nobody. It is okay to cry because you can pin up that yeah. emotion and you can channel it a whole lot of ways. Yeah. And may, most of them may not be positive. Yes. But it's okay to feel emotion. Mm -hmm. Even if you do it by yourself. But it's better if you can have somebody that's going to comfort you or be there with you. That's right. That. That's right. So, and let them be there for you. 
Yeah. Something that people, oh, now nah, I'm good. I got this. I nah, struggle with that okay. as well. Let someone mm -hmm. be there to comfort you. You don't always have to be 100% strong. Just do what you have to do to get back. So, but just feel. It's okay to feel. And in order for you to heal, you have to go through that. Mm -hmm. So, And I'm telling you from somebody who stay hard in the therapist's office. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. I was in denial about it. I was like, I don't want nobody knowing my business. I don't want nobody doing that. Mm -hmm. um, probably just as bad as most males yeah. because I'm used to dealing with things on my own. Mm -hmm. But I have learned to express things to my siblings when I feel it's necessary. And I definitely... Um, take advantage of those who are in position to help me mentally sort things out. Yeah. So, yeah. Woo. Boy, that was a lot. Yeah. I got to get my lashes filled. That was a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got to get my lashes filled. <laughs> Did you guys have a uh, song of the week? Um, mine is Her Comfortable. Wonderful. John? Rick Ross, made back music six featuring John Legend and Lil Wayne. Woo. Love it. Um, Justice League. For me, it, <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's a song I've been listening to all week. It's just been on my heart. Um, Kurt Franklin, Conquerors. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, whew, what a heavy, 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 heavy thing. We are everywhere that you need to look for us on social media short this podcast at gmail.com is our email twitter handle um facebook instagram the short desk podcast short the short desk is all together then podcast uh, please download us on all streaming apps i know that there are some bots out there i've seen that it is only one the short desk podcast you will see all our picture up there we are the short desk podcast Holla at your boy. Cocaine in the can, baby. Uh-uh. <laughs>